All right, so here's the Kahoot from week seven on discrete stuff. Um, so we'll go through it and we'll see if, the, I mean, if there's anything that you didn't understand is when it happened in class, I'll, I'll just break them down for you. So first questions are just about discrete or continuous to make sure that we understood what part of part five we were in. So in this case, uh, number of oil spills would be discrete because we can't have half an oil spill, right? There are whole numbers that were number or count. Um, this is what lets us know we're in a discrete land. Versus our next question, the height of a randomly selected college student. Now, in this case, we're talking about a continuous random variable because it is possible to get anything on the entire range of heights. Now, most of the time it's reported out as discrete, but we're thinking about the like most beautiful form of this particular thing. All right, and so the next questions all dealt with the discrete probability distributions. And basically there are two requirements for these distributions. One, the values need to sum up to one because this is the entire sample space, right? So all the probabilities have to sum up to one. Uh, the other is that each probability has to be legitimate. So the problem with this particular discrete distribution was the probability of two is negative, which is nonsense. So um, just as a reminder, if you ever give me out a probability greater than one or less than zero, I will dock you an extra point out of like anger. So um, this one is definitely not a valid distribution. Okay, um, the next one, this takes so long to load. These all look good in terms of being values between zero and one. Uh, but if you actually double check, you could have busted out a calculator, but if I just add up the final digits here, seven plus four gives me one plus a six gives me seven. So these are not going to sum up to one. I'm pretty sure this ends up being slightly under one. So this is also not a valid probability distribution. Um, finding probabilities from these discrete distributions is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is be very careful about our reading. So at least three would be three and more. So all we're doing is adding the 12 and the 16 together to get this 28%. Yeah, the, most of the time the mistakes there are just not grabbing the correct um, part of this distribution. So hopefully having the visual makes this a little easier. Uh, one or less, well, same idea, one or less is these two pieces added together. It's like we're gonna get a 61. Beautiful. Uh, and then we have questions about whether or not something is binomial, which is another thing I like to do in terms of the binomial assumptions. So tossing a coin 100 times to see how many land on heads. We got our fixed number of trials, binary heads or tails, independent because we're tossing a coin, and the success is always 50%. So this is a binomial distribution by definition. All right. Asking 100 people how much they weigh. We got our fixed number of trials 100. Uh, independence is probably randomly selected, though it doesn't say that. But the issue here is our outcome is the amount someone weighs, which is a continuous variable. It's not a yes, no, it's not binary. So we're not dealing with a binomial. Now, if we were looking at asking 100 people if they weighed more than a certain amount or if they were overweight, then we'd have a yes, no, if we were totaling up the number. So that could be a binomial experiment. But how much they weigh, that's continuous. That's not going to give us what we want. Uh, asking 100 people if they've been to Paris. Fixed number of trials. Uh, we have a binary outcome, yes or no, been to Paris. Independent, because we're going to assume these are randomly selected. Uh, and then the success should be the same each time. We didn't tell us what it is, but that seems like it could be a binomial experiment. So um, obviously, I would like to have a little bit more information here about the random selection, about what that probability is. but because I had such a small amount of space to write in in these cahoots, this is as good as this one got. All right, tossing a coin until you get heads. This one fails because we don't have a fixed number of trials, right? This is actually what we call the geometric uh, distribution, which does have a special formula and uh, can be used in certain ways. In fact, you'll find GeoCDF in your calculator, uh, but this is not a binomial because we don't know how many times we're gonna flip the coin. All right, the NCK, that combinations formula, 
is actually about the number of ways to get those k successes in n trials right this was how many ways could we get two questions right of four or whatever that was so that's what that piece is about and we want to find the probability of zero correct this is got all the math there for you so you don't have to think very hard this is just did you ever get your calculator out for this problem for this kahoot so we're doing a binome pdf we're buying two dozen eggs so that's 24 eggs that we have trials for that was the hard part the tricky part we know three percent of them are cracked and we want exactly zero to be cracked so our probability is about 48 percent or the blue one boom so most of the mistakes there are probably just not grabbing the 24 for the number of eggs that we were looking at. Um, big issue in that last one, by the way, if you were actually thinking about whether or not binomial was reasonable, um, I don't think that the eggs in a dozen and a carton are going to be independent, right? If that carton got dropped, there's more likely that we have multiple eggs cracked within a carton. So I think that the independence piece of our requirement for binomial would be very sketchy for that particular problem.